Father, we honor and praise your name on this morning. We love to bless your great name. We love to call your name. It's something that we just can't explain. We are honored to be in your presence this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together like this journey of faith. Oh, yeah. Listen. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name. Your great name, yeah. We love to call your name. Call your name. It's something, it's something we cannot we explain. Cannot power in the name of Jesus. So much power in your name. Oh, name yes it is. Jesus. There is so much power, power in, in your name. Oh God, there's so much there power, power in, in your name. name oh, yes it is. Power Come on right name. here, say, come on, say, things change. Things change when we call.
today. We love him this morning and we give him praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we magnify your name. Yeah. We glorify your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we say, nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Oh, nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Come on and help me sing. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Searched all over.
works in your name. Your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. You're worthy of all our praise. Worthy of all our praise. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. of all our praise. Yeah. Oh, mighty are the works of your hands. Hallelujah. Mighty are the works of your hands when you deliver me from sin. Mighty are the works of your hands when I almost died. But mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. journey of faith. Lift your voices. Lift your voices in worship if you know that we serve a mighty God. If you know that his hands are mighty. If you know that he's worthy. Come on, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth in worship. Open up your mouth in worship. Come on, say your name is above all presence in this place. We lift you high, Father. Oh. Come on and stand wherever you are for the litany. Hallelujah. <laughs> Abba, Father, no matter what great dangers we may face, grant us strength and protection to support us and carry us through all through all temptations and we all say dear, dear father our hope our refuge our protection is in you jesus you are the shepherd over your flock be our shield of protection and guard us forever our god is faithful he will strengthen us and protect us from the evil one Father, make us sensitive to your leading and help us to be eager to obey. Dear Father, our hope, our refuge, our protection is in you. Dear God, hear our prayers and prepare the way of your servants in safety under your protection. Our God is faithful. He will strengthen us and protect us from the evil one. 
Watch over our paths and guide us with your love. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. And now let us declare our vision affirmation as members of Journey of Faith. We are building faith and providing hope through Christ-centered love. Come on, I dare somebody to lift your voices right where you are and say hallelujah. Come on, say your name is above all. You know that the Lord's works are wonderful. The Bible says in Genesis that, the, that God took seven days, six days, he created the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested. But not only did he rest, the Bible says that when he stepped back to look at everything that he created, <laughs> he looked at it and said, it is good. You may have been feeling like life isn't worthy, worth living lately. Maybe you're facing some challenges, some circumstances that you never thought you would face before. All of us are in a time and a place and a space that we're facing things that we've never faced before. But I want you to know this one thing today. I want you to be encouraged to this one thing. As a matter of fact, I want you to hang on. Yes. I want you to hold on yes. to this one thing today, yes. that you are a mighty work yes. and you were created for a purpose. And God did not bring you this far to leave you. He created you for a purpose. And for that reason, because you are his mighty work, you have something to do. Your life is worth living all because Jesus lives. You ought to be encouraged on that on today. You ought to open up your mouth on that on today. You ought to shout hallelujah on today. You ought to declare his goodness on today. You ought to declare his righteousness on today. You ought to declare his glory. For the Lord is good, and his mercies are everlasting. His truth endures for all generation. Somebody open up your mouth and give God the greatest praise. Right where you are, in your living room, in your bed, at your breakfast table. Come on, everybody, declare it with us. Everybody say it. Come on, let's say it. Say, mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands.
I want to ask you, right here in this space, we're going to go to prayer. We're going to move to prayer. And we'll come back and do a couple of announcements here, but I think this is the right place for us to enter into a, prayer, a time of prayer. So I want to ask you right where you are, I want you to bow your heads. If you're able, you're capable of standing to your feet, I invite you to stand to your feet. And I want you to, I want you to go with me right here into this place. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We thank you, God, for your love and your kindness. For Father, your mercies are new every morning, and we thank you, Lord that God, even just by opening our eyes, yes. that Father, it's a new mercy, even breathing the breath that you breathe into us, the breath of life, it's an opportunity, God. Father, that when we stepped out the bed this morning, God, we thank you, Lord, because you made the enemy nervous. The enemy was nervous because of the fact that we, that we are more than conquerors through them that love Jesus, that love Jesus Christ. And so because you've made us more than conquerors, Father, every time we set up in our beds, every time we step on the floor, the enemy gets upset, the enemy gets nervous, the enemy gets scared because he don't want us to go forth in the purpose and the destiny that you have designed for us. But God, we thank you because you said that every weapon that's formed against us, it shall not prosper. And every tongue that rise up against us in judgment, you say, Lord, surely you shall condemn. And so we thank you today, Father, that, Father, as we walk in the authority as kingdom citizens, as we walk in kingdom awe of who you are, Father, as we move in you, as we breathe in you, Father, as we glorify your name and the purpose that you've created us for, Father, we bless you right now, and we thank you, God, but for what you're going to do through us and how you're going to move it, how you're going to move into this earth, how you're going to move into our neighborhood, how you're going to move on our jobs, how you're going to move in relationships, how you're going to move in our community, how you're going to move in our city, how you're going to move in our state, how you're going to move in our nation. Father, because there's a remnant of believers that are rising up even in this time. There's a remnant of believers that are rising up in this space. Father, to give you glory, for you said in your word that if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And so, Father, we thank you, Father, that you have adorned us, Father, with your glory, the anointing to walk forward, the anointing to live forward, Father, in the truth of who you are, Father, and claim this world, Father, for the sake of your kingdom. For you said in your word, Father, that every knee shall bow, every knee above earth, every knee on earth, every knee beneath the earth shall bow before your name. Father, and declare that you are Lord. You're the King of kings. You're the Lord of lords. And Father, we give you thanks today. Father, we give you praise today. Father, we glorify you today. Father, we lift you up today. For you are worthy of the glory. You are worthy of the honor. And so, Father, we come to you today, lifting up those, Father, that have hung down heads. We come before you this morning, lifting up those, Father, who are sick and uh, in their sick beds. We come before you this morning, lifting up those, Father, who are feeling discouraged. Father, those that are wrestling with psychological issues. Father, we lift them up before you this morning. We declare your goodness. We declare your righteousness. For you said, Father, we don't have to be anxious for nothing, Father, but in everything through prayer and thanks, God, we want to give Give you glory. Father, you said that if we pray, if we seek your face, Father, you said, Father, that your peace that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds. And so, God, we come before you today, lifting up your name, giving you thanks, giving you glory, 
Father, just like the birds sing every day, we give you glory. Like the lions roar, we give you glory. Hallelujah. When the cat, when the cat meows, God, we give you glory. Just like the dog barks, we give you glory, Father. Father, we were created to worship you. We were created to praise you. And so, Father, we lift you up today. Come in this place. Holy Spirit, dwell here. And Father, as you dwell, we lift up your name. As you dwell. Rest right here. Hallelujah. In this place, Father, we need you. There's never a time that we needed you more. We certainly need you now. So, God, we ask that you would move here by your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody lift your voice and say, thank God. Thank God. And amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Some of y'all probably standing on your feet. Some of you probably got your feet kicked up. I ain't going to even bother you. If you're standing up, I want you to, you can take a seat. Rest on your feet. Rest, rest. There you go. There you go. Well, I want to say good morning to everybody. So thankful for you all coming in this morning. Listen, I want to ask you, if you haven't done so by now, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but listen, if you haven't done so by now, I want to invite you to please take some time. Share this live stream with somebody. Somebody needs to be encouraged. This worship team has been ministering on this morning. I'm going to say thank you all so much. Thank y'all so much. Thank you so much, Sister Arby Johnson, uh, who's uh, ministering with us as a soprano on this morning. We're so thankful for her. Of course, y'all. <laughs> and then we have, uh, y'all always know, Miss Lady, uh, Miss Lady Onika Peters uh, is with us as well as in, under the direction, uh, Brother George Anthony. And then we also have, yeah, I mean, they've just been ministering. They've been singing, you know. Uh, my glory. And then uh, my friend of mine, uh, Sister Ruth Goldsby. So we're thankful for her being with us again. Uh, listen, I want to say to you all, uh, we thank you that you all continue to tune in uh, to live stream every week. <laughs> um, I thank you all. You know, y'all y'all send me a text message or something or somebody going to call me and say, Pastor, man, I appreciate it. So listen, we appreciate you. Opportunity, and we appreciate you for continuing to be a mission minded church and so thankful uh, for what God has done and what God is doing. Uh, uh, thank you for those of you that continue to give, uh, not out of necessity, but you give out of your abundance because it is that when you give out of your abundance that you don't have to live in lack. Hallelujah. Uh, when you give out of you, when you prioritize the kingdom of God, we thank you uh, for that uh, uh, heart to prioritize the kingdom of God. And giving out of your abundance makes room for, for, those, for, makes room for more blessing. Uh, and so for that, we give God thanks. We give him praise. And listen, if you're giving out of your necessity, just keep giving. Just keep going. Don't stop there. Don't feel bad. Don't let the enemy make you feel like, oh, I don't have much. Because listen, what you have is much to God. And if you give your much to God, God will make much for you. So continue to give out of your necessity and watch God pull you into, bring you into the overflow, into the abundance that he has purpose for you, for your family, for your life. Amen. Uh, listen, I want to share a couple of things with you all um, as we prepare to shift. Uh, and then the praise team is going to come back with one more song uh, just before we go into the sermon. But I want to share a couple of things with you uh, really quick. <laughs> Y'all get ready, get ready. Oh man, I've been I, I've been holding this. Y'all been hearing me say this for the last couple of weeks. Got some stuff we're working on and wanted to share with y'all. Hang on. <laughs> wanted to want to share. Uh, couldn't wait to share it with you all. I said, uh, I've been telling you, hey, listen, uh, y'all, we got some things, and I, I wanted to tell it, I wanted to tell it, but I couldn't tell it because I had to hang on, uh, hang on to it. But I want to stop and say I am so godly proud of this church and what you all are doing. It's a pandemic going on, and God is blessing us to be able to maximize even in the midst of folk having to stay home and all of this weird stuff going on.
going on with virtual learning. And you know, listen, I'm, I listen. I do Zoom meetings and all of that stuff because I have to. But I pre I prefer to meet y'all and see y'all in person. I am so zoomed out; it don't make no sense. I am. I'm, I'm serious. Y'all don't understand. I do Zoom every day. My children are at home online. I'm I'm zoomed out. I don't want to see no more Zoom. I really don't. Listen, I thank God for technology. I thank God that we are a technical, technologically conscious uh, congregation. However, my goodness, I get tired of looking at these computer screens. Lord have mercy. Okay, I'm not complaining. Am I complaining? Do I sound like I'm complaining? I'm a, okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, James said, uh, 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 confess. Well, it's not a really a sin, though. Uh, Sister Marshall, it's not, it's not a sin. I'm not, okay, all right. Um, so anyhow, amidst everything that's been going on, I couldn't wait to tell you all, September the 26th, this coming Saturday, September 26th, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Y'all get ready, get ready. I feel like T.D. James. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. All right, see, y'all were supposed to catch me on that answer. Yes, was. That's what's right. <laughs> All right, listen, I feel like that, that's a T.D. Jakes moment. This Saturday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., our church has partnered uh, with uh, Representative uh, Harold V. Dutton Jr. Uh, and the Houston Food Bank and uh, Target Hunger uh, to provide a community-wide food, mask, and sanitizer distribution. But it don't stop there. We're gonna also be doing a voter registration. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, that's worth giving God praise. I'm gonna tell you why. Because we have an opportunity to ensure that families in this community do not go hungry. And guess what? This is gonna become a monthly thing for us. All right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, we have a responsibility to be the hands and the feet of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not in the four. This, the, these four walls, this is a blessing. Air condition, this is a blessing. Lights, camera, action, keyboard, drums, all. That's a blessing. But the, the real call for believers is to be uh, 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 in service into the community and so I'm so thankful that you because of your kingdom mindedness uh, you understand the responsibility of connecting with the community and so on this Saturday we're going to be feeding a thousand families 1,000 families a thousand tell somebody a thousand families this coming Saturday, if you know somebody that you know, you know they can use it, tell them to get out here. Now, listen, it's drive through only. Tell your neighbor, drive through, drive through, drive through only. So, you got to get in your car. You might have to sit in a long line. However, I want y'all to get here. I want y'all to take the, um, uh, y'all see our post on Instagram. Y'all see our post uh, on our Facebook page. We got church Instagram. We got church Facebook. All of the pla our media platforms. Y'all take it. Share it with somebody. Please pass the information on. You got some family members you know. Tell them to get on out here and come on out here. We have partnered uh, with uh, Harold V. Dutton, uh, uh, shoot, uh, Houston Food Bank, Target Hunger, uh, our friend, our sister church, uh, First United Methodist Church here in Humble, uh, the Luke Church. Uh, Dr. Timothy Sloan had some conversation with him on last week, and he has given his word. They're going to be with us as well. Uh, we had an opportunity to serve with them. Uh, all of us did a few this food drive uh, a couple of months ago right here in Audubon Park, and we had such a good time. And uh, listen, same thing. We, we gave away a 1,000 boxes of food, watch this, uh, in an hour and a half. Oh, wow. A 1,000. And it wasn't a lot of us at all. But let's, let me tell you something. What we got coming up this coming week, you don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss this. And so our outreach uh, department, uh, Sister Stevelyn Levine, is going to be reaching out for volunteers. Uh, we have also Sister Mary Jones, who is the coordinator for this food distribution uh, as a part of our Rock uh, Redeeming Our Community, which is our 501c3. So I want y'all to get ready. Then, watch this. It don't stop there. Next we have, watch this, watch this. Oh, my God, I'm so happy. Uh, the next thing you all need to know is that your church is going to serve as a polling uh, location uh, for early voting and for voting day. 
So uh, the Harris County clerk uh, office reached out uh, to us and basically confirmed everything was good to go. So we're going to be start. They'll start uh, moving techno techno technology equipment in the first week of October, and then from October 9th all the way through November the third, your church is going to be serving the community by providing a place where folk can come and vote. And in this community, we definitely need to have those types of locations. So I'm excited about the fact that you are maximizing. Yeah, remember that's our theme for this year, maximizing for the sake of the kingdom. I want you to know that we're so thankful uh, for all of you. One more thing before, before I let you go. I want to say to you, uh, the Journey Kids will be meeting. They have their Zoom. Here's another Zoom. Lord have mercy. <sighs> Oh, but, but it's for the kids. It's for the kids. And listen, they Zoom every day, and, and, and I know because my kids get burned out with Zoom. Well, however, we are so concerned with, this, with the spiritual formation of our young people, so I want uh, to invite you. Reach out to Miss Tracy if you want the information for your children. We don't put this out publicly, of course, uh, to protect our young people. However, if you are interested in your child being uh, in the Zoom with the Journey Kids, uh, I want you to reach out to Miss Tracy Bullard, who is our director uh, of Children's uh, Journey Kids Ministry and the Trailblazer Youth Ministry. She's got some things coming up for the Trailblazer Youth. We gave them a little break. However, to my young people, y'all get ready because we're getting ready to we can ready to lock back in to get you all uh, going because we are concerned about your growth as well. Amen. So they will be meeting at four o'clock, four o'clock this afternoon. You can reach out to Miss Tracy uh, at Tracy. It's Tracy at faithjourneyumc.org. Tracy at faithjourneyumc.org. If you are if you're interested in joining in any of our other spiritual formation groups, our, our small groups uh, here at Journey of Faith, adult groups. We have men's group. We have uh, marriage ministry we have uh, Sunday school groups uh, listen go to our church website faithjourneyumc.org and you can see all of the ways that you can stay connected or get connected right here at Journey of Faith amen Wanted to, want you to know that we love you we thank God for you and let's get ready to hear from the praise team amen hallelujah the Lord deserves our praise yes he deserves our worship. Come on, lift your hands and say, Lord, you deserve my praise. You deserve the honor. You deserve the glory. Hallelujah, yeah. I'm saying, Lord, you deserve it, Lord. We lift up our hands to you, Jesus. You're deserving of this praise. Oh, Lord, my hallelujah belongs to you. Bless your name, God. My hallelujah belongs to you. Yeah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it, yeah. You deserve it. Come sing my hallelujah, yeah. Hallelujah belongs.
I just want you to give God a worship. Come on from your spirit. Oh, we give you glory, God. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah.
about you but my hallelujah is my choice I choose not to fear I choose not to let the enemy think he's going to win I choose instead to adore God with my praise so my Everybody say that. My hallelujah belongs to you. Such a sweet spirit here. My hallelujah belongs to you. And then when you can't think of nothing else, you say, oh, oh. yes. Oh. Yeah. My children were singing this. Oh. <laughs> oh. My daughter just walked in the room and said, oh. And I said, what you mean, girl? She said, oh. I said, what you talking about? She said, oh. I said, I see where you're going. Oh. Oh. Now I'm talking to the oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Oh.
I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to move on. been wrestling and the Lord switched my whole sermon up whole sermon as y'all know we've been in a series titled Conqueror y'all can keep playing as you can keep playing and uh, thank you praise team thank y'all we've been in this series we've been in, we started the series Conquer It and uh, I was wrestling I was struggling And also often when I feel a struggle in the spirit where I'm working on sermon, I realize oftentimes that the spirit is trying to get me to switch because it's not ready for that particular sermon to be birthed. So um, the Lord switched my sermon and now I know why the Lord switched my sermon. Now I know why uh, the Lord did that <clears throat> because of this worship moment right here. I really understand why the Lord switched my sermon. Y'all, we're going to talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> I want to say thank you again uh, to all of you that have tuned in uh, and that are sharing in this experience. I want to ask you all to keep in your prayers the, the Adams family, Miss Dorothy Adams. and uh, Some of you may or may not know Mr. Doug Adams uh, was in the hospital last week, and so we just want to continue to lift them up in prayer. Uh, Doug Jr., uh, Tyra Adams and the rest of the Adams family. Uh, such a faithful family here at Journey of Faith. So I ask y'all to do that. Also, I want to ask you to lift up the Eastland family in your prayers, if you would. Uh, and those that are affected by the hurricanes uh, that hit the coast on this week, we'll just continue to keep the rest of our church family in prayer. Hmm. My goodness. Glory to God. Man. Y'all don't understand. Y'all just don't <laughs> understand. Y'all understand. Listen, we're going to go to, this, this is a switch. This is a switch. I know some of you are probably following on the virtual worship uh, plan that we send out to everybody. Uh, however, we are taking uh, a step. We're going to step to the side today uh, from our sermon series. And the Lord gave me a, ser a sermon uh, <clears throat> that we preached some time ago. And I believe it is so befitting for where we are right now. I think somebody needs this. I believe 
that the reason the Lord gave this to me is because somebody needed. So we're going to Nehemiah chapter eight. Nehemiah chapter eight, <clears throat> verses one through ten. And uh, I want to try to try to see if we can cut across this field here. Uh, Nehemiah chapter eight, verses one through ten. And I'm reading from the NRSV. And it reads, all the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra uh, brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could hear with understanding. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an honor to be able to hear the word of God with understanding, with clarity. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women uh, and those who could stand, could understand and the tears and the ears, I'm sorry, uh, of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. I'm going to jump to uh, verse five. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the, all the people stood up. And some uh, that everybody stood for the word of God. Some folk will sit, but everybody jumped up. And don't, don't get me wrong, physically not capable, I understand it. Uh, 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 listen, I get it. We're, it's a different time that we're in. But it is amazing that as soon as the word of God was open, the reverence was to stand for God's word. And we live in a culture right now, day and a time, in this 21st century where people don't reverence God like we once reverenced God. There's a difference here. There's a reverence for God and for God's word. Verse 6, then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, amen, amen. Lifting up their hands, then they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord and with their faces to, uh, with their faces to the ground. I want to jump to verse 8 here. So they, the Levites, read from the book, from the law of God with interpretation. They, the Levites, gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. They wept, they cried when they heard God's word. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the feet, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine and send portions of them to those for, uh, for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our God. And it's something God allows you. He's blessing us as a church to send food to those who are in need. In a time like this, we have to be the gospel of Jesus Christ. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved. For the, hope, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. This is the word of, of God for the people of God, and we all say thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. I want to share with you for the time is ours to share, ours to share uh, from the thought, convictions of a worshiper. Convictions of a worshiper. Uh, you all may be seated. Bow your heads. God, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for your honor. We thank you for all that has been shared here on today. My prayer, dear Father. Lord, is that you will speak now to your people, Lord, even now through the proclamation of the word. Uh, we thank you that your word has been proclaimed from the beginning of this service through song, through prayer. And now, Father, as we share from the text of your word, Father, enrich our hearts, our minds, transform us, renew us in only the ways that you can do. Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. From my own experience, I knew that there was nothing strange in the fact that a man who finds bread agreeable to the taste when he is well finds it hard to eat when he is sick. Uh, these are the words lifted from uh, Book 7 of St. Augustine's Confessions. St. Augustine was a 4th century North African theologian whose contributions as one of the early fathers of the Christian church influenced much of Western Christianity. Even the psychology uh, uh, and political philosophy of the West since, uh, even the psych psychology, pardon me, and political philosophy of the West since the Dark Ages. <clears throat> 
In these words, we find a man that agonized with the inward conflict concerning the need, the want, and desire to follow Jesus Christ over against turning from his sinful ways. A desire that beckons for all of us daily so that we might walk and talk with Jesus. In these words from St. Augustine, we find a person who after much struggle to pursue his own lusts and pleasures has finally come to the conclusion that while the word of God, the bread of life, agrees to the spiritual taste buds of a true worshiper or disciple of Jesus Christ, uh, sinfulness or uh, the, uh, a person that is sick, as he says, cannot digest nor comprehend the bread of life. If you look around us today uh, and we survey the land, you will notice that folk are doing all kinds of things that don't have no, they don't have no reason doing, but they don't care because they don't reverence God. Because uh, once uh, upon a time, we reverenced God in such a place where we were convicted to do the least little thing. And now we live in a culture that is so desensitized to conviction of the word of God that they run on doing whatever amount of thing that they can and they cannot digest uh, the sincere pure milk uh, of the word of God may I suggest to you that Augustine's words still ring true to the 21st century and that communion with God on any level is only fulfilled when one submits themselves to the grace and power of the creator as we look back over our lives, most of us can attest to Romans 7, 19, where the Apostle Paul says, For I do not do the good that I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. If we would be honest, all of us have wrestled with living the word of God. I don't care how saved you are, life is full of temptations that are waiting to trip you up. But don't be weary, my sisters and brothers, because as, I, as a believer, you have something in your arsenal that can destroy every trap and every snare that our adversary has set before you. And in case you didn't know, you, 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 you need to know that you have the word of God and worship at your disposal, uh, and you have those at your disposal at all times. Some of you have tapped into your authority by tapping into these weapons. Y'all y'all ain't going to talk back to me. You've tapped into your authority by tapping into these weapons of worship and word, word and worship, prayer and worship, prayer, worship, and word. Uh, some of you have learned how to worship God in the good. Some of you have learned how to worship God in the bad. And because you've learned how to worship the creator, good, bad, or ugly, you've learned how to rest on the promises of the creator's uh, on the creator's word I can hear a song writer say uh, through it all uh, uh, I've learned how to depend upon God's word I've had many tears and sorrow I've had questions for tomorrow uh, there's been times where I didn't know right from wrong but I'm so glad to know that through all of the tests and trials that I have been through the songwriter goes on to say I have learned to depend on God's word you see, I've come to realize that there are multiple charges that Satan and Satan's den uh, have railed against every true worshiper. And this is why uh, the, that rascal don't want y'all to know, you, who, know who you are and whose you are. According to the enemy, uh, you and I are, uh, 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 y'all to hashtag this, y'all, you are guilty as charged. I want to argue this today. I want to argue it because according to the devil, according to our adversary, the enemy, Satan, Lucifer, y'all know him. According to him, we are guilty as charged. Uh, there are several counts that Hell's Den uh, has levied against us. Uh, and today I want to lift those up uh, for you. I want to highlight these couple few charges just for you uh, so that you can go on uh, with your life. And you can get on out of here. You can go on about your business today. But before you leave, I want to leave these things with you uh, because 
because you have been called to be a convicted worshiper. Uh, and here are the convictions of a worshiper. Now, 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 whenever a jury, y'all understand, uh, whenever a jury uh, completes deliberations and reaches a verdict, uh, on any case, most of you know that the charges are read in the hearing of all present. And that reading typically uh, states on the first count, we, the jury, find the defendant guilty or not guilty, right, right, right. They're going to tell you, you're guilty or you're not guilty. Thus, uh, for the real worshipers, any real worshipers in here, any real worshipers on this line today, any real worshipers, thus for the real worshipers, you should know that you have been found guilty. Here it is. On count one, the worshipers' convictions motivates you to join with other worshipers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your convictions, your conviction, your conviction to the word of God, your conviction to worship with others, your conviction to get in the place of sanctuary and worship God, praise God, and not care about what anybody else got to say about you pushes you, motivates you to join with other worshipers. According to verses 1 and 2, the Israelites uh, that have returned from exile under Pers uh, Persian rule to Jerusalem uh, have settled into the hometowns uh, upon rebuilding the walls and restoring the gates under Nehemiah's leadership that had been demolished and burned. As they settled in from all of the hard work and even the stress of having to protect themselves while laboring to complete the task of rebuilding, Nehemiah has called everyone to assemble together to hear the law. I'm convinced that there are enough of us here that have uh, been through some things. You've been through hell. Uh, 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 you've been through enough hell in your life to know and realize that it was nobody but God that has brought you all of this way and brought you through all of the turmoil that you have ever experienced in your life. And, 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 and when you have sensed enough, uh, 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 when you have sense enough to know that God's grace was upon your life, uh, that sense of understanding motivates your desire to be in fellowship with other worshipers who've, who've had similar experiences. Other worshipers that have uh, been at the brink of death. Other worshipers that have been at the brink of suicide. Other worshipers that have been at, uh, ostracized and criticized, lied on, mistreated, mistreated, abused. Other worshipers that have been falsely accused. I don't know about you, but, but when I reflect on the fact that I could have been dead and gone, sleeping in my grave six feet under because of my rebellious ways, I thank God that God kept me even in my ignorance and this prompts me to get up off my rusty dusty and join with all of the other worshipers that are coming together worshiping God giving God praise lifting up his holy high name to celebrate the marvelous works that God has done y'all heard the praise team say earlier mighty are the works of his hand let me tell you something when you see me my brother when you see me my sister don't hate on me don't be jealous of where I'm at and what I got going on what I'm doing because you don't know the hell that I've been through. You don't know what I got, what I had to come through just to get here. And so, miss, let me tell you something. My, my conviction to give God praise motivates me to worship him and to walk in the authority of who he's created and purposed for me to be. That's, 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 that's who he's created me to be. Let me move on here. I wonder if I have a witness uh, in here that can declare I want to be in the number because I'm a convicted worshiper. Uh, and where there, I understand the Bible says that where there are two or three gathered together in my name, God says, there will I be, hallelujah, in the midst of it. I'll, I'll be in the midst of it. See, 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 I understand that God dwells in the place of worship. Uh, 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 uh. It don't matter. You can be in the church house. Hallelujah. You can be on the playground. I tell you, I can remember in, in school, we were church kids growing up. Y'all know my father is a pastor. My mama, I was in church every week, all day, all the time. I'm in church. And that church went to the schoolhouse with me. Hallelujah. And I can remember times, my friends, all of us playing church uh, uh, at recess, all of us playing church in the gym. And I had to tell them, y'all better stop because God going to jump all on us in a minute. And then before you know, we ain't going to be good. And they kept playing around. We kept playing around, calling on the name of Jesus and giving God praise in our play. And next thing you know, my friends are worshiping the king. See, 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 you can't be with two or three people calling on the name of the Lord and not.
not find yourself in a place where the spirit, hallelujah. Yeah, the Bible says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. And so your liberty, your freedom is in the place of worship. Which brings me to the next count, because on the next count, on the second count, uh, 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 the conviction of a worshiper is that the worshiper is convicted of giving their undivided attention to the word of God. I, I'm, I'm going to say that again. Uh, you are convicted of giving your undivided attention to the word of God. Watch this. People of God, a true worshiper understands the importance of stepping away from the demands of life in order to get a refreshing word from God. A, a true worshiper understands that devoting themselves to a lifestyle of hearing from God through God's word mends broken pieces. A true worshiper understands that there is fullness of joy when you get into God's presence. Some some of us hear from God frequently because we spend time studying the riches of God's voice through God's word. But for those of you that are on the verge of buckling under the pressure and under the stresses of everything that's going on, you got folk living in Louisville, Kentucky, can't even get justice for Breonna Taylor because 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 the, the justice system, the evil system that exists there can't even do what's right by this woman's life and fire the police. They can't do what they're supposed to do. And you got folk that are buckling under the pressure of this pandemic. You got folk buckling under the pressure of systemic risk. You got folk buckling under the pressure of everything they got going on. Zoom life is wearing you out. You buckling. But I came to tell you, baby, if you will learn how to get in God's word. Hallelujah. I'm so encouraged today because I believe that God is lifting up a standard. I believe that God is raising up a generation of people that will say, for God I live, and for God I die. I believe that God is raising up a people that say, Pastor, I realize I need to get into God's word. You ought to be encouraged by that today. Uh, 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 because, because watch this, watch I ask you, well, I, I, I need to know, I need to know, I need to know, I need to know this. Y'all just, just go with me. I need, I need to know, I need to know. I want to know. Uh, for those of you uh, that don't do this frequently, those of you that don't encounter God's presence regularly, I want to ask you the question today, when was the last time you stepped away and you unplugged uh, from the demands of your job? When was the last time you stepped away and you were unplugged from the demand of your family? Family is important. I'm a family man. I'm married. 60, uh, 15 years. I've uh, been married. Just celebrated. Watch this. I'm married. Love my children. Two children. Love everybody. But there are times where my wife and I even, we have to disconnect so that we can get into God's presence. When was the last time you stepped away from your friends? When was the last time you stepped away from agendas and especially your agenda and you said, God, what do you want me to do? God, what do you need me to do? God, how can I be of service to you today? When was the last time? When was the last time you stepped away and you decided you were going to get into God's presence? Because, because uh, this is a good time. I tell you right now, this is a good time for all of us, for any of you, for those of you that haven't done so, to take time to get into your Bible. Get your Bible out. Uh, you may pull it out on your iPad, your tablet. I don't care what you got. But this is a good time for you to pull out your Bible and get back to the Word of God. Ah, get your Bible. Some of y'all ride, ride around with your Bible in, your, in the back window of your car. I remember a brother was telling me one time, oh, when I first moved here, I was riding with him, and he had this Bible in the back seat of in his car, and, 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 and he didn't have air conditioning. We ride down the street. Watch this. His, he shall remain nameless. We ride, and I don't know where we were going. We were going to where to just, we, I, oh, we were going, we on, uh, well, I won't say that either because I'm riding with this brother. He ain't got no air conditioning. I just moved to Houston, all right? And, and y'all, so y'all already know me and humidity don't get along. We just, we ain't friends. We just, we have declared to be enemies, all right? But I'll take this humidity over going back to Chicago in that cold weather and all of the, uh, the snow. Okay, all right, all right. I remember riding in this brother's car, and we just talking and we laughing, and the Bible is in the back window. And you know what happened when all the windows down, the pages just... The Bible already ain't got no cover on it. 
It's just I mean, it's just tore up. The Bible is tore up. And watch this. I said, hey, man, you going to get your Bible out the window? Oh, it's all right, man. It'll be just cool right there. You know, I'll keep it right there. But every time he finds himself in trouble, he would always tell me, man, I'm, you know, I'm just a babe in Christ. And I said, the reason you a babe in Christ is because your Bible spend more time in the back window of your car than it do in your hands so you can study it. See, 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 you have to understand that as a worshiper, a worshiper is drawn to the word of God. A worshiper understands how to handle the word of God with, uh, 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 and not mishandle the word of God. A worshiper understands that every word of that, every word that proceeds out of our mouth, watch this, uh, 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 is precious because it's the word of God. Why? Because the psalmist said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And so a real worshiper understands that as I hide God's word in my heart that word will flow up out of my belly like a, like a river of living water and as that word flows up out of my belly I understand that I have to take care of the word. I have to protect the word. I can't just mistreat the, the word of God. I can't just mishandle the word of God. I can't just throw it around. I don't just throw my Bibles around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of y'all just throw your, you can't do that. But you have to treat God's word with respect. You got to be, listen, this brings about my, 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 my third, my third, my third count. Because I think that the third count of a convicted worshiper is the fact that this, watch this. The worshiper is convicted by the word of God through humility and reverence. Yeah, yeah, well, why are we on the subject? Why are we on the subject of reverence and, and, and handling and treating God's word with respect? The text says that Ezra, the scribe, opened the book in the sight of the people, and they all jumped to their feet. I suggest to you uh, that their response to the opening of the world represents respect. Uh, as a matter of fact, I suspect that you wouldn't only be listening attentively at the at the creator's word at what the creator's word says but also referencing God's instruction out of humility after all that they had been through Israel has been through a whole lot they've been through hell high water up the street down the street around the corner back forth all all day every day they've been through some stuff y'all and remember they have been living in exile as a result of their disobedience and had seen everything taken from them them and now it's being restored. One time, one time I was riding y'all, one time I was riding with my kids I was riding with my kids, we were riding our bikes down the street and, and my daughter, she had really just started riding her bike, she had really started riding her bike and if, and if any of y'all know Diz, y'all know some of y'all know this. some of y'all see Diz y'all be like, oh she's so precious but Diz, Diz is diva, alright so, 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 so you know and, and oh man, she's got it on us, okay? And, and watch this. And she she is extremely smart. Oh, she's extremely smart, and she's very um, uh, perceptive. And she missed this one, y'all. We were riding down the street, and we were getting ready to go down a very steep slope. And, and I knew she wasn't going to be able to handle this slope on the sidewalk because she had never been there before. See, sometimes when you ain't never been somewhere before, it's good for you to take the wisdom of the soft voice that's trying to help you get, well, okay, okay, let me, let me go here. That's, that's, that's a side step. She's going down the hill. She's get, well, we get ready to go down. I said, Diz, I said, I said, hang on, baby. I said, let daddy, you know, let, let, me, let, me, let me help you. And you know what she said? I got it, daddy. Step back. See, sometimes God steps back. When we think we got it all, when we know it all, and God knows you ain't never done this before. You ain't never been here before. But God has a way of stepping back and say, okay, you got it. See, that's what happened. That's why the Bible says, lean not to your own understanding. My daughter went going down that hill, and it just happened that us, I knew what was coming. So I start moving with her, and as sure as she started moving down her hill, that hill, the bike was going forward, and her body started going backwards. I mean, it was like the Matrix, y'all. I mean, it was like slow motion. It was like, ah! 
And just as she started to lay flat, I had my hand under her back. And I caught her. I caught her. I caught her in my hand. Now, now, now I knew. I, I knew y'all. So I knew she didn't have it. But, but, but because I caught her, uh, I made sure. I made sure that I stayed close enough to her. See, see. Oh my God. One thing that I've come to understand about God is that a worshiper, hallelujah, no matter where you are or what challenge comes your way, sometimes you will have a challenge that comes your way that's trying to knock you off of your bicycle, but God is so faithful and God is so just to stay close enough to you so that when you start going backwards, hallelujah, <laughs> he'll catch you. And here's what I love. He don't just catch you, but he sits you back up. He prop you up, and he tell you, now go do it again. See, 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 but, 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 but a worshiper understands that God's presence is with you. See, 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 see. A real worshiper understands that, that, that no matter what I am facing in life, right now there are some folk that are dealing with some deep psychological issues because when you have to stay in your home in solitude, things can happen. The enemy will challenge you. The enemy will try to come at you. But I came to tell you today, you ought to be encouraged, baby, because God says, I've not forgotten you. God says, I'm watching you. God says to tell you that you may, uh, uh, weeping may endure for a night. Some of you find yourself just crying. Some of you find yourself, I can't be with my other friends. I can't be with my church family. I can't, listen, God says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. I, can't, I came to tell you, so I came to tell you, I came to tell you, hallelujah. That the enemy wants to trick you. He wants to deceive you. He wants you to believe that God has forgotten all about you. But if you learn how to worship him. See, see God wants you to worship him. Why? Because the Bible says uh, uh, they that worship him must worship him. What? In spirit and in truth. It's not just enough, Sister Marshall. To worship him in the spirit. Hallelujah. But, but, but my worship should be, uh, 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 it should be modeled. It should be uh, found in the fact that wherever you see me, you see me as a worshiper. See, see, I, I'm convinced, I'm convinced that the state of the world right now is representative of people that not that 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 have not that have not made priority their worship and see it's one thing to worship the nba man those rockets boy lord have mercy it's one thing to worship the nfl it's one thing to worship mlb but it's a whole nother thing to worship the creator. It's another thing to worship the maker of the heavens and the earth. It's one thing. It's a whole nother thing to worship him who is. I understand why Richard Small wrote, that, wrote, wrote the song because it's, a, it's another thing to understand who the source of every resource that you have, everything that we have, your clothes, your shoes, your car, your home, your house, everything that you have, it don't even belong to you. God is lending it to you. And so for a God that is a provider, he's a way maker, he's a heart fixer, he's a mind regulator, he can transform me. Listen, for that God that can do all of those things, why would I not give him reference? I'm so glad that Richard Smallrule wrote the song, you are the source of my strength. You are the strength of my life. See, y'all don't understand. That's a praise that's happening. That 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 is evidence of a worshiper. See, understand when when Smallwood pins this song that we have all come to love and enjoy. Understand that he's writing from a place of worship. 
he's writing from a place of encounter that he's having with God. And I can imagine, often as a, even as a songwriter, I can imagine that he was probably in tears as he wrote the song. I wonder, I wonder if there's anybody that you're in such a deep place of pain such a deep place of disconnectedness. You find yourself in such a deep place of wondering right now. I wonder when the last time was that you stopped and you decided to just give God some praise. Israel cannot move without giving God. Israel has only been successful when Israel worshipped the king. When Israel didn't worship the king and Israel decided that they had it, daddy, it was in those times where God stepped back. And y'all read your Bibles, you've been reading them. Some of y'all know these stories. You're hearing them all your life. God steps back and he allows the chaos, he allows the calamity of the earthly realm to consume his people until we humble ourselves. I'm so thankful. This is why the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. See, God is calling us into a place of humility. He, 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 he's, he's, he's trying to get us to get back to a place of reverence. Right now, this nation is under siege. It is under siege by powers that exist that are so evil stuff that's going on that you and I couldn't dream and or imagine that's going on. And God is saying, if my people who called by my name will humble themselves. Pray, hallelujah. Seek my face. Turn from your wicked ways. God says, then will I hear from heaven and I will heal the land. The question is, are you a convicted worshiper? But because if you're a convicted worshiper, I want you today to be drawn back, hallelujah, into relationship with God. Listen, we can't afford right now for everybody to be scattered. We can't afford for everybody to be dispersed. We can't afford for everybody not to be focused. Because there's a war going on. And God needs, he, he don't need us. God wants us. He desires for his people to come together in the spirit of unity. Because as we come and we worship him, God begins to move. He wants to move in our land. He wants to heal the land. But he's wanting us to submit ourselves into worship. If you got to lay on your face, I'm, I'm asking y'all today, listen, you got to lay on the floor. If you know, well, pastor, if I get on that floor, I ain't going to get up. That's all right. I want you to lay across your bed face down. I don't know, don't suffocate yourself. But I want you to get prostrate before the Lord. And I want you to go to God. I want you to worship him. I want to ask, I want you to praise him. I want you to lift him up. I want you to pray. I want you to ask God, God, we need you. There's a clarion call for every believer to get before the Lord, to get before his face, to get before his throne. And I guarantee you, if you get before his throne, God's going to move in this land. In this coming week, I want y'all, do it. Get into your word. 
get back into that place of worship. As you saw the Israelites with Nehemiah, when Nehemiah, when Ezra opened the word of God, everybody's standing. God is looking for people that are going to reverence him and not try to pimp him. See, y'all want to go to God when you need something. But it's time out for going to God for what I need and going for God for what God wants. God wants this earth. And you are the believer. You are his citizen. You are a kingdom citizen. Because as you are, because you are a kingdom citizen, God wants to, He wants to shine His light through you into this land so that this land can be changed and transformed for the kingdom. Pastor, I want to know him. I want you to know him. If you don't know Christ as your Lord and your Savior today, you can know him. Open up your mouth. Say this with me. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to hear your word. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Father, I come to you with my heart open, my mind receptive. Dear Lord, I confess you with my mouth, and I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Friend, if you said that today, you have accepted Christ as your Savior. If you're not a member of a church somewhere, maybe you're a member of this church and you strayed away. However, I want to invite you to get connected to a church. Well, they're not meeting right now. That's all right. Call them up. Find the pastor. Track them down. Find a Bible-believing church. I want you to get connected. Because even though folk aren't worshiping physically, a lot of people are still having very small Bible study groups and other uh, virtual opportunities for you to connect to God's word and you could connect to the rest of the church family that are connecting on those virtual opportunities to, to worship the king. So I want to invite you to make sure that you get into a church. If you say, Pastor, I want to be a part of Journey of Faith, I'm glad you asked that question. I want you to send us a message. Send us a message, an email at office manager at faithjourneyumc.org. If you send us a message there, I guarantee you we're going to reach back to you and we're going to contact you. We're going to connect you and get you connected right here at Journey of Faith because we're still going on. You may not see people in the building, but we're still uh, worshiping together, praising together, studying God's word together, growing together. And so I invite you to join us right here at Journey of Faith. Listen, let's get ready to go. As we get ready to depart from this place, I want to uh, pray for you. God, I bless. I ask that you would bless these, uh, your people right now under the sound of my voice. Father, Lord, that you would touch them in a mighty way. Father, that you would convict us once and again. Lord, that we would be worshipers, sincere worshipers, that our hearts would be drawn to thee, Father. Draw us nearer to thee, dear God. Help us to be closer to thee. Help us to walk with you. Father, help us to talk with you. Father, in everything that we do, Father, help us to come to you before we do anything. Lord, I pray this right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, want y'all declare this with me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. All right, we love you. Y'all go home. Some of you are already at home. All right, God bless you.